Yeah, Community Matters here at the five o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and the, and the, 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 the beautiful lady on the other side is, is Elizabeth uh, Satoris, and she joins us to the, ask the age old question here on Community Matters Who will create our human future? Question mark. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, Jay. Good to see you again. <laughs> we, yeah, we get together on a you know annual or semi-annual or triannual basis, and this is our big our big show together here. <laughs> so, Elizabeth, you're still teaching, right? I haven't been during COVID. Ah, okay. Everything got shut down. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, I still do a lot of teaching online, but uh, I haven't been at the university. Okay. And at the university, what, what have you been teaching? What were you teaching? Well, uh, I had the good fortune of working together with uh, our now departed elder Coela Clark and Ramsey Tom and the then head of the business school at Chaminade to design living economies courses, uh, especially for our island economies here in Hawaii to help us get sustainable but they, uh, they haven't been very good about promoting those courses, I'm afraid. And uh, that's the problem we face here is that we're not taking sustainability and a better living economy future seriously enough. But you know, it's going to catch up with us. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that's the reality. So let's ask the age old question. Um, yeah. Who will create our human future? Uh, and uh, I, I, I mean to get specific about this. So let's name names, okay? Yes, well, I think our title actually was, will it be the corporatocracy or will it be we the people? And okay, well, I, the first part of that, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> and, I, and I made a mental note that we're gonna ask you about what is a corporatocracy? Well, let me start just with a little bit of introduction of myself as an evolution biologist, because the most important thing I uncovered in my study of 4 billion years of evolution was that species- How, how long did that take you, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> it took a lot of years, but it's hard to condense 4 billion down into a few minutes. So that's what we have to do now, right? Oh, yes. So, the point is that there is a maturation cycle in evolution where there's a youthful, expansive economy mode, like when you're growing up and your cells keep doubling and you get bigger and bigger and bigger up to adolescence. And then you have to level off and spend the major part of your life in that size body, which shrinks a little bit again at my age. But uh, anyway, it, go, it moves from an expansion economy where there's lots of creativity and lots of competition and hostilities uh, all wound up in that youthful mode. And then you have to make the shift into a cooperative mode for the rest of it. So you have to go from the hostile competition to the mature cooperation. That's exactly the inflection point where we people are at now. And the contenders are those who have been in control in the youthful mode, which is the corporatocracy. And this is made up of our biggest corporations, including the banks and the Googles and the, you know, the ones that came out of Silicon Valley, as well as the older ones. But the Silicon Valley derivatives have, of course, now completely taken over. Someone pointed out the other day that when you go on to uh, Google or Amazon, you're moving into a feudal autocracy where one person has the algor has is in charge of the algorithms that drive your behavior. <laughs> Gee, I and thought you were, I thought you were talking about Vladimir Putin there for a minute. How did that come in? One person can drive your behavior. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, we've had a number of those, haven't we, over time? And we had a, a president who was behaving that way ourselves in yes, this country and who was best friends with Putin and, and the others, right? <laughs> well, let me, but let me go back for a moment. You know, there's yeah. a movie which we review here in Think Tech um, called the Gilded, the Gilded Age. 
and it's a documentary and it talks about the railroads and steel and uh, oil. Yes. And it talks about um, Andrew the robber Carnegie. Barons. The robber barons, yeah. Right. All, all in the, uh, what they call the, uh, the Mumford deck, the, um, the, the Brown decades. And that right. was the subject of a book by Lewis Mumford uh -huh. covering between the civil war and the end of the 19th century and um and and that effectively ended that 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 period uh with well, the election of of uh, mckinley william mckinley it, it McKinley certainly put, put a lot of restrictions on it it didn't exactly end it but it certainly tried to bring it into a more democratic uh model right 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 but the the, the end of the uh the, the the throw on that was the election of 1896, where McKinley represented Wall Street and William Jennings Bryan represented the people. And it's the same question that you're asking today. Exactly. Will we have this corporatocracy or will we have government, a country, in Lincoln's words, by, for, and of the people? Um, and the election showed, at least at that point, that inflection point, that it was going to be a corporatocracy run by Wall Street. And now we're in a situation globally where uh, the dollar is not likely to remain, you know, the main currency much longer. And the corporatocracy is now wanting to create a completely digitized currency, which is part of the whole control mechanism of what I call the this uh, Great Reset takeover uh, that the corporatocracy wants. You see, they've We've done about 6,000 years of empire building as humans, and this is the last gasp. This is where you want the empire to be global. And so you have organizations like the World Economic Forum, which gets all of the big bankers and the heads of the biggest companies, everybody all onto their team, including from China. They knew that you have to bring China into the new global empire. You can't, don't want to end up fighting them. So they all got together and they've been training leadership around the world including Angela Merkel and Macron in France and Trudeau in Canada and even uh, Jacinda Ardern in New Zealand and Bill Gates. And all of these people are graduates of the Young Global Leaders Projects of the World Economic Forum. And they look good because they kind of hide behind the Millennium Development Goals and make everybody think, oh, this is going to eliminate poverty and this is going to, you know, bring the the people into a better world uh, that benefits everyone. But what it's really going to do is going to completely digitize the economy as long as they can. And this is where, Jay, I'm going to argue that global warming may be on our side <laughs> to, to scotch that little program. But uh, the, you've now got a whole generation or two already, uh, you know, wedded to their iPhones and thinking that this is a great world we're gonna be in where we're gonna get free money from the government. And uh, and so what if they surveil us? What have I got to hide? You know, there's no problem. I won't have to own anything and I can get anything I want right through my cell phone. And they don't even ask if, if the people don't own anything, who owns everything, right? <laughs> they don't even ask this question. So this is a, the boiling frog situation where, where young people have grown up on their iPads and iPhones, and, and they think this is perfectly fine. And of course, China developed the whole social credit scores and things so that only if you hang out with the right people and behave yourself according to how the government wants you to behave, will you be able to get that pay and be able to buy the stuff or lease, lease the stuff. You won't you know, apropos to that point, just what? last evening on, on 60 Minutes, there was a very interesting segment you know, we have a housing shortage in the country. Uh, we're 4 million houses behind the curve right now and, and steadily increasing. Uh, and there are, um, there are capitalists uh, that in this particular segment. It was a company out of Toronto, believe it or not, um, that was buying houses all across the country, huge numbers of houses and then renting them because the people in the country could not afford to buy them. Um, the market is so, you know, hot and, and, and you know, inflated um, that the average Joe cannot buy. He has to rent. 
So these companies come in, they buy lots and lots and lots of houses, uh, they fix them up and they rent them like hotcakes. Right. The result on a demographic basis, I'm sure you'll appreciate, on a demographic basis, the American dream has become all the more elusive. Right. Somebody else, what did you call them? The, um, the, the corporatocracies are buying the homes yes. that a, a generation ago people could and would and did buy. That's right. Not they anymore. want to own everything, Jay. I mean, who's who's the biggest holder of farmland for food growing in the country? Bill Gates. Really? He's the biggest landholder of agricultural land. He set out to buy all the farmland up. So what's that going to do to the food supply when we know that he's supporting Monsanto and uh, don't you love Bayer having swallowed up Monsanto so that they can make huge profits toxifying your food supply and then huge more profits selling you medicines because you're now sick from the bad food? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, this, this is a problem that, that has been nipping at us for a while, Elizabeth, and um, not, a lot of, not a lot of writers and thinkers have focused us on it. You know, it's sort of gotten by us, but nevertheless, it's happening and worse. And so the question I put to you is uh, the one you put to me. Who will create our human future? Will it be the corporations? Because back in the turn of the century, in the year 1900, the people said, we will trust Wall Street, you know, um, to determine our future. They know best. Uh, of course, that was a hard fought election. Uh, bottom line, though, is that's where we have been. We have allowed corporate process, corporate ownership, and all that goes with it to control so much of the American society. Exactly. And that's why the maturation cycle is so important to Brock, because it's like the, the, the caterpillar in the chrysalis, right? That caterpillar is doomed. Whether the butterfly is going to emerge or not is up for grabs whether we the people <laughs> are going to build the new light on the earth society, the butterfly society or not, is still up for grabs. But we know that the caterpillar can't last. And that's what gives me hope. The corporatocracy cannot last. It is unsustainable. What does unsustainable mean? It cannot last. It won't last. However, it's going to take everything it can get while it can get and it's going to go down screaming. But that's why I say climate change is exactly what may be what may get in their way, because when when we have sudden sea level rises of several meters overnight, it's not going to go gradually up a nice linear curve and no one understands the exponential curve. We just got a report this past week that in the Arctic, the average temperature in one place is 70 degrees hotter than normal. 70, not seven, 70. That is a wild, wild fluctuation. So why do you say that's a good thing? Why do I say what? It's a why good do you thing? say that's a good thing? Because we are going to be so busy bailing ourselves out of the sea level rise catastrophes that we won't be stuck in our cell phones listening to what the corporatocracy is telling us how to behave. We're going to be trying to scrabble to provide food and shelter and water and transportation, whatever, for each other. Well, you're talking That's about an apocalypse. You're talking about people starving, dying. Yes, they're already doing that. That's already happening. It's not been here on our turf, but it is in other parts of the world. It's there already. And what do we do? What does the corporatocracy do? It keeps making wars. It keeps selling weapons and, and beating each other up instead of making peace and going into the cooperative mode. This is the caterpillar's nature. The youthful economy does not want to let go. And they will drive this thing into the ground and then the people will have to rise. Now, there are many examples of people already rising up, and we see them here in Hawaii. There are important movements trying to get Monsanto out of here still. And, and you know, poor Gary Hooser trying to reform the government and getting it to act by its own, according to its own laws. And, uh, and all of the people that are working to, to grow more organic food, the whole Ulu movement with uh, Tusi at University of Hawaii, 
my dear friend Tusi. <laughs> and uh, uh, let's look at, let's look at the two possibilities here. Yeah. Um, one possibility is that the um, corp corporatocracy will continue to run things and maybe run them into the ground. Yeah. Um, the other is that the the people, um, what did you call it in your question? Well, the, the human being people, <laughs> those people, um, they, they will rise up and they will determine um, our future. Yes. Okay. So That's us. I, and I think we covered a little bit about the corporatocracy because if they keep doing that without regard to the impact of their bottom line, you know, philosophy on things. Yeah. Milton Friedman said that bottom line philosophy is bottom line. Um, if they keep on doing that, there will be a disaster, an apocalypse. Uh, that, that's a good, well, that's one, that's one identifiable option. But the other one I'm having trouble with, the one where you say, well, no, the people, the people will achieve the leadership. The people will rise up. They will take over. Uh, they will be in charge and they will they will stop this corporatocracy. How no, in the world no, they, did that no, happen? No, no, I didn't say they would stop it. They will build the alternative just as the, the butterfly doesn't stop the caterpillar. It builds the alternative within it. How's that going to work? Well, for example, every time there's a catastrophe here, and we've seen this through COVID, through all kinds of, every time there's any kind of disaster, what happens? People start cooperating. They start helping each other. They start pulling each other up by bootstraps. The best thing that came out of COVID was that we elevated caregivers, cooperators, to the heroine status, the hero and heroine status. That's an important lesson right there. And when the sea level goes up two meters and a couple of hotels fall into the Waikiki beach and become the new coral reef, believe me, people are gonna scrabble to feed each other, to take care of each other, to provide shelter for each other, uh, just as they have in every disaster through history, right? Well, I mean, you know, the question is whether mankind uh, or womankind, whether the species is perfectible or imperfectible. And some people would disagree with you. They would say it's imperfectible. They will fight with each other. They will try to steal from the other. Yeah, uh, the evidence is against only that. about their own interests. The evidence is against that. Sure, there are always a few renegades who will do that. But the evidence is against it when you look at human disasters everywhere, all over the world, every flood, every fire, every famine. You see uh, Fukushima, the Japanese sharing their rice down to the last grain with other people. This is the real nature of humans. The real nature of humans is to cooperate. We, can, we know how to do it in families. We don't see a lot of families where what, one kid is overfed and the rest of them are starved. You know, that's considered a wild anomaly, isn't it? Uh, if you do get that, somebody chained up in the basement or whatever. We are natural cooperators and we cooperate all day long. Okay, well, no, you're opening you're opening a large door for me to ask you about uh, reconciling all of that with Ukraine. Ready, go. Look, I don't think we should try to get into Ukraine in, in this particular uh, talk because we have only a half an hour and it's a very complex situation there. Very complex and we don't get the complexity of it in our daily news. There are people who always want warfare because they can sell weapons to both sides. And we have to get over that and move into our human cooperative mode. We have to get out of patriarchal uh, top-down authority and the people must reclaim the power to take care of each other. And that's what the people of the world want. They just feel powerless. But I can give you so many examples of pockets of the world where this is all, this cooperation is already happening and is very successful. We have the role models and we can see it here in Hawaii. We just have to look back at our very recent history, you know, a century ago, two centuries ago, Hawaii was feeding as many people as, as live here now. And they were doing it with the Ahupua'a system and it was working well and it was equitable. 
uh, and yes, they had wars and they had conflicts and things, but on the whole, they were able to feed these islands sustainably and we could do that too. What is preventing it's, us from doing that? It's absolutely stupid of us to, to live with a three-day food supply and not take care of that in a better way. If what is preventing us from doing that? Short-sightedness and greed. You know, the people in charge are as greedy and corrupt here as they are elsewhere. Otherwise, we wouldn't be building big condos for people uh, who buy them up from Asia and don't live in them, so they become the dark towers, and the local people can't afford to live in them. You know, all of that stuff is is corruption and graft, and people taking bribes and stuff. And as I say, we've got wonderful people like Gary who's are trying desperately to change that situation within the government. But we're, there are times when you have to take matters into your own hands and hang the law about whether you can do it or not, you're gonna grow food. You're going to build green, more green energy. We could be doing a hydrogen economy here, a solar, a, a geothermal. We've got everything we need for clean green energy. And it's just that the, the will is lacking in the government because nobody wants to rock the boat because somebody else might hurt them about what they're getting under the table. You know how it is, Jay. But we well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with anything you've said, uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, but I, do, I do wonder about who is going to do this. Because you, you talk about the government. Well, who is the government? No, and where are the people? And if the, the government, people are the perfectible government. and they will rise up and, and fix this, um, uh, then uh, where are they? It's not about fixing. It's about building the local pockets of self-sufficiency so that they become attractors to others who say, oh, my God, they've got enough food on that island. Why aren't we doing it on our island or on this part of the island? You know, if that community... Uh, over in Y and I can take care of their homeless and set up education and healthcare and stuff. How come we're not doing it on the rest of in the rest of Hawaii? You know, we even right here have these examples of people who have shown sustainability to work. What about the political officials who we have elected to run our communities? They're enthralled to the corporatocracy. I'm sorry. So we new, need new ones. Yeah. And who are, who are they? Where do we find them? How do they get in position? They, they will emerge through the practices, Jay. They will emerge through the practices. Look what, I mean, I've, I've talked myself silly about preparing for sea level rise and nobody wants to hear it. They want to sandbag the beaches. You know, that doesn't help if you've got a tsunami coming in. And when it leaves the next morning, you're, it, you're, well, sea level is two meters higher. Uh, and, and your canals have backed up the sewers into Waikiki and Waikiki is like finished. Um, you know, how much tourism are we going to have then? Is that what our economy is going to depend on? I don't think anybody's going to be coming to Hawaii once the hotels start falling into the ocean. There are other people who feel the same way. <laughs> Good. As you and I, uh, that these are problems that are not being addressed. And that they, you know, they're ultimately going to be very serious problems, and they're going to affect the state in profound ways, many, many profound ways. And, and you soon. know how soon ultimately is? We, if we could only pe teach people the exponential curve, you know, if you put pennies in a gallon jar and you double them every day, it takes a long time to get that jar a quarter full. How much? How much more time does it take for it to be full? I give up. When it's one fourth, it's going to double every day. The next day is half, and the next day is full. That's what 70 degrees higher temperature in the Arctic means that we're around that hockey stick curve of exponential curves, and that it can come any day now, any night now, we can get this kind of a sea level rise. It's well, I hate, I hate to be self interested about this, Elizabeth, but what do I do? If I, I, I accept what you're saying. Yeah. What do I do? What you do is you, you do what you're doing. You bring people on to talk about it. We talk ourselves blue in the face <laughs> about it until people, but for some reason, humans seem to have to be driven by catastrophe to cooperate instead of using this mind to foresee the disaster and cooperate ahead of time, right? Now, let's, I'm not- Let's saying, take Puerto Rico. Yeah. Let's take Puerto Rico. They, they really didn't handle their electrical system very well. Their economy was $80 billion in the hole 
when mm -hmm. that um, Maria struck them, and and um, and they never did recover. Uh, they're they're still you know behind, way behind the game. So what did they learn there, uh, having been the, the object of a, a tremendous you know apocalyptic tragedy in within Puerto Rico? What did they learn? They learned a lot about local production of energy and things. And, and we here in Hawaii, we know what to do. We know what to do and we know we can do it. And we, it's just the will isn't there yet because we really don't believe that this disaster is, is coming our way. No matter how often the news reports California is burning and Asia is drowning and whatever, we don't want to believe it's going to happen here. And we know that our beaches are eroding. We've got the sinkholes, we've got the houses falling into the sea, and we still don't move back from the edge. You know, <laughs> you know there's an organization called runforsomething.org. Run for something. It's it's uh, operated by a woman named Littman on the mainland. And uh, I, 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 I'm very interested in organizations like that, where they're saying, run for something. Um, get in, get involved in the fray. That is our structure. That's what we got. May not be perfect, but that's what we got. And if you run for something, you can have an effect on it. Have you ever thought about that, Elizabeth? I, I'm not quite sure what you're. I'm I'm suggesting you could run for something. Could what run for something? Yeah. Oh, it's too late for me. <laughs> I just had my second hip replacement. I'm hoping I can walk again. <laughs> okay, well then, all right, then let's assume this. There's, a, there's some people out there listening to this and making careful notes. Um, what should they there, do? Should there, they are a lot of people, there are a lot of people, Jay, working on getting better people elected. They, that grassroots movement is there in politics. It's there in food. It's there in energy. And it, it's, you know, it's going to weave itself together. It's just at my age, you get very impatient. I have six great grandchildren, you know, like uh, wow. they're all going to be facing this. And I would like to see more proactive stuff going on. We've got to get our living economy going here in Hawaii in a much stronger way. And we have the people who have, who have led the way already. Uh, who is Dottie, what's her name, up on, the, on, the, uh, on our East Coast, you know, who, who put together tens of thousands of maybe 100,000 meals during COVID. And, you know, we've, we've, got, we've got our heroes and heroines already here in Hawaii. Okay. We can do it. Okay. As, so as Rumi said long ago, why do you stay in prison when the door is so wide open? <laughs> well, but you know what? What I get out of this is that the probability is a, is a significant possibility, if not a probability, is that uh, as in biblical times, we won't get it together. And if you, if you follow all these threads you've been talking about, <clears throat> the result will be a disaster and we won't be able to eat and people will get sick and they will die and the population and, would be and less. Others, and others will live. And, and others will live to carry it on. Yes. And so what you're really talking about is the survivors. It's like they say, you know, the war, the, 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 the details of a war are not told by those who were victimized, uh, it's told by the survivors. So you don't get an accurate picture of what happened. And, and I would apply that to all of history. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, the people who tell the story are the ones who survived the story. And the, and the survivors in this case are going to be those who are not dependent on the digitized society who are growing food, who are taking care of water and food and healthy living, which makes a lot less sick people than when you're eating unhealthy food. And, and uh, you know, I believe nature, nation states will go down the tubes. Historically, they're, they're too unnatural. They're unnatural lines scratched across the earth, right through cultures. They create warfares. They won't work. They won't survive. But cities, 
cities do not have standing armies and they have a long history of relationship and cooperation within. They will be the distributed networkers of the future insofar as they're not on the coast being drowned. Uh, the surviving cities will be those on higher, higher ground who evolved from small communities into big cities, not the ones where you build a big infrastructure overnight, like in China and the Middle East, and then throw unrelated people into them. Those are doomed to failure. But actual real cities that grew from towns have a, have a chance of surviving if they're on high enough ground and have enough good agricultural land around them and water supplies. We have clean green technologies, including you know hydrogen clippers coming up. I'm living for that one. That can carry huge amounts of of uh, cargo and and water to put out fires and inter island. I call them sky canoes. About two years to launching the first ones of those. So we we have wonderful technologies coming down the pike. And we have to not depend on this big digitized money economy. I don't think we the people can do anything about that except build alternative currencies. And I have long said, if the Hawaiian state government would issue alohas freely to people and tell them they can pay their taxes in alohas, that will immediately le legitimize the currency good only in Hawaii. It'll never go offshore because it won't be of any use to anyone offshore, but it will keep our local economy going. And that's a big one that we should be pursuing now because if the whole bank failure and stuff comes down the pike and we're operating on Aloha's, no problem. You see- we Well, we operate on Aloha's too, you know? And <laughs> uh, right now I think we're out of time actually, Elizabeth. <laughs> So we're going to have to operate on an aloha now. Is there any message you want to leave with the people who are viewing this um, as to yeah, which side of the coin they want to be on? <laughs> I already said it. Why do you stay in prison when the door is so, so wide open? We know what to do. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Elizabeth Sassatoris joins us every now and then. And we, and we solve the problems of not only this world, but the future of this world. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much.